when I was you. I remember when I was in my 20s and I'd play basketball all night long and get up the next day and go. And then I had my 30s and I still played basketball all night long, but I'd wake up in the morning and I was sore, okay? And then I had my 40s and I'd wake up in the morning and I was sore. I didn't do anything last night. Hey, get ready, it's coming. And now I've reached that age where I can wake up in the morning and realize I hurt myself going to sleep, Okay. <laughs> I got a cricket medic because I slept wrong. I could hurt myself in bed. That's how it happens, okay? But this is what the scripture says. Outwardly, we are wasting away. But inwardly, we are being renewed every day. But, are we? Because it seems to me that some of us are not doing renewing very well. And I meet so many believers who exhibit signs that their souls are tired and anxious and joyless. And the last thing they would want is for me or Pastor Gabe to pray over them the prayer the Apostle John prayed over one of his friends. Look at this verse with me, 3 John 2. He says, Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Be honest. Would you want Pastor Gabe to pray that prayer over you? God, I want everything else in my life to be as healthy as my soul is right now. I want my marriage. I want my kids. I want my health. I want my job. I want my finances. I wish everything else was as good as my soul is doing right now. You see, I became burdened as a pastor over my flock several years ago as I had conversation after conversation or as I got on social media and just saw post after post of the people in my flock and over and over I saw evidence. Our souls are not doing very well. And so I've got five questions for you this afternoon. And here's the first. I want us to be honest. Is it well? With my soul. Okay, let me back up. God created us with a body and with a soul. And that soul is not just part of us. In many ways, that soul is the center of us. See, our very being was made to be saturated with the being of God. And our soul is that part of us He fills. Let me show you a couple of songs the Hebrews love to sing. Psalm 42, my soul thirst for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My soul is hungry for God. Or, or look at this verse, Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. Now, if you know Hebrew poetry, the second line often repeats the first line, but just use different words. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost be ye. Praise His holy name. So what is my soul? My soul is that part of me deep within me where I most intimately commune with God. Now, that is why the enemy is relentless in making war with our souls. And he's doing a good job. So let me state what I think is probably the obvious for all of us. We are living in a culture that has normalized a way of doing life that is toxic to our souls. Okay, well, I'm going to say that again because that's heavy truth. We're living in a culture that has normalized a way of doing life that is toxic for our souls. And we see the consequences all around us, the skyrocketing rates of anxiety and depression. 
the mental health challenges that are overwhelming us and especially our children, the rising abuse of alcohol and opioids, the constant airing of outrage and offense, and most of all, just living always exhausted on the inside has become the new normal. And we keep telling ourselves, well, it's just a season. When the truth is, it has become a lifestyle. People are losing their souls. And when you lose your soul, you lose your capacity to connect intimately with God. And so I see so many Christians that would not want John's prayer prayed over them. May everything else in my life be as good as my soul. And the good news is that Jesus understands. And he offers something better. Maybe the most precious invitation ever given is this one. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. Jesus knows we're tired. Jesus knows our souls aren't doing very well. And he's offering us a better way to live. He's offering not just to be our eternal savior. He's offering to be our daily shepherd. And that leads me to, I think, the greatest song ever written. And I know that's a bold claim, but when you've been on the top of the charts for 3,000 years, you get to say that. <laughs> And by the way, I had never heard the version we sang tonight. It was awesome. Thank you for that. But look at these words with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. And so, let's be honest tonight. Is it well with your soul? Let me remind you the wisdom of two of History's greatest philosopher, Socrates, said, the unexamined life is not worth living. And Ice Cube said, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> and so that leads to the second big question this afternoon. Is my soul undernourished? See, I believe much of the damage we're doing to our souls is self-inflicted. And it starts with the vacuous and the frivolous and even the poisonous diets we feed our souls. And let me just go ahead and get in your grill a little bit. A huge part of the problem are these dopamine dispensers that we keep in our pockets. And one of the hard things that I had to accept that God revealed to me last summer in my sabbatical was this. My soul can't do life at the speed of my smartphone. It's not good for my soul. My soul cannot handle all the hate and all the outrage and all the suffering and all the evil going on in the world at any moment. My soul can't do it. God can do it. My soul can't. Now, I can understand if you're a little willing to push back a little bit of what I just said. So I'm just going to ask you this question. When is the last time you spent 30 minutes posting, reading the comments, going down the rabbit trails, following one meme or TikTok video after another, then put your phone down and said, I feel so much closer to God right now. <laughs> Our souls are overgorged and they are undernourished and they can't rest. See, that's the thing about sheep. Sheep can't lie down if they're hungry. They lie down, they rest when they're full. And it's the job of the shepherd to make sure that sheep has a nutritious diet to take the sheep where it needs to go so it can fill itself so it can rest. This is what our shepherd has done for us. Psalm 19, the, Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect. It refreshes the soul. 
Okay, everyone do me a favor. Stick your foot out. Just stick your foot out. Real, stick it out. Okay, keep it out because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Here's question number one. How many of you think every single thing you see on cable news is trustworthy? Okay, second question. How many of you believe the Word of God is trustworthy? Okay, last question. Why do you spend so much more time watching and listening to what isn't trustworthy than listening to what is? And I had you stick your foot out so I could step on your toes a little bit easier. So, God convicted me, and I made some changes. I had a Twitter account. I'm not judging you. I'm not saying you should do this. I'm saying I had a Twitter account. I had it for years. I tried it every day to do tweet something encouraging. It got really, really big. Thousands of people on it. But you know what? Wading through the sewage every day on that platform was bad for my soul. So I deleted my account. It has been good for my soul, and it seems to me the world is getting along just fine without me tweeting every day. <laughs> Another thing God convicted me about was I was running away from silence and time with Him. And so, because I live in a world where I don't ever have to have silence, I can punch a button and I can have noise anywhere, anytime. But I've stopped doing that. I've learned it's okay to get into a car and drive for 15 or 20 minutes and just be quiet and see if the Lord wants to say something to me. These are things I've been doing to take better care of my soul. Augustine said we've got to empty ourselves of all that fills us if we want to be filled with what we've been empty of. So, this question. Is your current diet sustaining a healthy soul? Here's a sec third question for you. Is my soul over-anxious? Sheep, sheep are notoriously anxious animals. In, in David's day, there were bears and there were lions and there were wolves. And what can a sheep do? It doesn't have claws or sharp teeth. The only thing it can do is run. That's why sheep were notoriously skittish. They had to constantly be on the lookout. And like sheep, Anxiety-producing situations aren't an occasional possibility for us, are they? They are the constant reality. Things to be afraid of are all around, and they're not going away. Do you know what the HarperCollins Dictionary Word of the Year was for 2022? Permacrisis. In other words, we are always in a state of some crisis. Think about the last three years. Pandemic, political instability, racial unrest, uh, violence and shootings and gun problems, inflation, climate change. We live with constant things to fear and be anxious about. And that's not going to change. Just like those sheep can't get the bears and the lions to move away. The only thing that can help that sheep rest wasn't the absence of the problem. It was the presence of the shepherd. Come to me, all of you that are so worn out and tired. And I'll give you rest. So could it be that behind so much of our soul weariness is the admission we have functionally stopped coming to Jesus. And instead, we go to other sources for relief while maintaining the lifestyle that frustrates restoration. I'll just binge on Netflix or have a couple of drinks to take the edge off or watch some porn. Where do you go when your soul is weary? And it is what you're going to just numbing the soul temporarily or giving it real rest. Did you hear oh, a few years back off the coast of New England, in, in the course of two weeks, they had three boats sink. They were uh, clam boats. They go out every day and, and catch clams. And all three boats, there was no hull breach. They were all three captained by veteran captains. So what happened? Here's what happened. 
You see, a clam trap weighs about 300 pounds, but you fill it full of clams, it goes up to about a ton and a half. And they found or realized that those boats had 10 extra traps on them than that boat was designed to carry. They were carrying 15,000 more pounds in those little boats than they were supposed to have. You know how that happened. Someone put one trap on, and it got away with it, and then two, and then five. And before you know it, it became normal to just carry more than you were designed to carry. And what everyone accepted was normal proved to be fatal. Jesus is inviting us to a way to live that would restore our souls.